okay, so this is an O scale locomotive. This is an HO scale locomotive. This is an N scale locomotive. And this, this is a Z scale locomotive. Look at that size difference. I think looking at them from the front end can give you a better perspective of the size difference going from O scale to HO scale to N scale to Z scale. But really you get a pretty big step down in size going from N scale to Z scale. But it's not as bad as you think in terms of what it's like to work with. So anyway, we're going to look at a new Z scale starter set that I bought. Give it a run and see what it's like. So here's a look at what you get in the set. You get the instruction sheet, a copy of Z-Track magazine. You get a oval loop of Z-Scale Rokuhan track, one of the Rokuhan battery powered controllers, three freight cars, and the locomotive. So pretty much everything you need to get started. So anyway, let's first take a look at this Z-Scale track. Uh, this is Roku hand track, and it's pretty much like Kato Unitrack. It's very similar in terms of how the rail joiners are set up, uh, what the track looks like. It's just smaller, but we'll go ahead and get a couple of these sections connected. It is harder to put together than Kato Unitrack, but the joiners are very tight. And so that's kind of a good thing is you're going to get a secure power connection with them. But you can see what the back looks like here. And overall, again, quite a bit like Kato unit track. Let's, let me go ahead and get some N scale Kato track and we can compare it uh, in terms of size. So anyway, this is a piece of Kato unit track and this is one piece of the Z scale track. Quite a bit smaller than N scale, but really it doesn't feel that much smaller when you're working with it. I mean, it's smaller, but but it's not quite the same difference as it is going from HO scale to N scale. So I didn't really have a whole lot of trouble working with it and actually getting everything on the track is not as hard as what I thought it would be here. So this, I can actually get everything on the track just with my fingers instead of using the re-railer. Although it's harder than with N scale, I think it's on the track. And while it's harder than getting N scale equipment on the track, it's really not that bad. And so you can definitely get everything on there with your fingers and you don't have to always use the included re-railer that you get with a kit, but this will obviously make things a lot easier. See here, the detail on this Z-Scale equipment is actually surprisingly good. The lettering is still really crisp and sharp and you can still read everything. So no issues with that as well. I mean, all the details look about like what you would see in N-Scale. So really I was quite impressed with what the detail looks like on this C-scale equipment. Look at the other side of this GP30, the two hopper cars and the coil car. Anyway, let's try running this C-scale set and see what it's like. If only I had a small Z-scale layout to run this on, so it wouldn't just be a loop of track here on this board. Oh wait, I think I do. So anyway, yes, I actually built a small Z-scale layout so I could actually show you this train on a nice scenic layout and not just a plain loop of track on the board here. And next week, I'm actually going to have a video on how I built this little Z-scale layout. But anyway, let's go ahead and get the train on here, give it a run, and see how it does. Now this set does come with a Roku hand controller, but I'm going to use uh, one that I already have batteries in. This one is a larger one that has the controls for two turnouts. Uh, you just get the smaller one that just has the on off switch direction and throttle. But I have this set up where I can just plug it in and so we'll go ahead and give it a whirl. So this is maximum speed here with this throttle. And this locomotive will run pretty slow as well. You can see here it does run smoothly at a fairly low speed. If I did have this broken in for an hour or so, I'm sure it would run even better at a slower speed than this, but you can see it does do pretty well.
So anyway, it's really hard to believe that something this small can run this well. I was really surprised by Z-Scale. I hadn't really given it you know, much of a look prior to this. I thought that it would just be too small, too hard to work with, but it's really not much different than N-Scale. I mean, it's a little smaller, but you know, the track is about as easy to use as Kata Unit Track, at least as Roku Hand Track. It's not that much hard to work with the actual rolling stock and locomotives that are this small compared to N-Scale. Again, everything is about two thirds the size of N-Scale, so it's definitely smaller, but it's really not that bad. And be sure to watch next week so you can see how I built this little Z-Scale layout, which is about 18 by 24 inches. So it's really not that small. I've done N-Scale layouts that are actually smaller than this. But with this size and the radius curves you have, you can run pretty much any Z-Scale equipment that you have. And so it's kind of a nice size for that, but it's still really small and you get broad enough curves to you know, be able to run really long equipment in Z-Scale. So it'll be a fun little uh, layout to have for displaying different equipment. And so if I do collect some additional Z-Scale locomotives and rolling stock, I will be able to run them all on this little layout. So again, be sure to watch for the construction of this next week. But anyway, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye. And again, next week, I'm gonna have a look at how I...